And that's the Catholic Church. It's the only human reality that is everywhere across the world. And it's the only reality that says it's not enough to be a neighbor. Because globalization can make us all neighbors. But only the church of Christ Jesus can make us sisters and brothers. Knights were always required to defend the vulnerable and the weak. That was their honor. And they were required to respond to the call of their king. That's what a knight was. Christ the King is calling us now to the battlefield that will leave us martyrs. That's how our foundation as an order was blessed. The death of our founder was during a pandemic in which he burned himself out to bring Christ and died. Died of what we are terrified of, but that he embraced out of love. He died of a virus. Huh? In our culture, we run away from each other. Christ the King's community, we run to each other. And we saw that. For before the beatification of Michael McGivney, we have our martyrs who in Mexico Knights stood up against the persecution of the church, the persecution that was done in the same way that is being done in Canada now and in so many places, in the Philippines as well. The most vicious persecutors of the church are its children who have apostatized. Ex-Catholics those who have said no because of hurt, because of arrogance, because of mistake. They can be bitter in their anger against their mother. And our knights were martyrs, showing us that we might be, must be ready to become martyrs. Every time I baptize a child, others, you know this, eh? When I look at these little kids that I'm baptizing, I'm seeing into the next century, and I'm seeing a martyr. Because that child will not grow up in a world like I grew up in, where it was okay to be a Catholic. We listen to the call of Christ our King, who orders us to the battlefield of martyrs. He's calling us now to the battlefield that's raging over the salvation of people in their very homes. Knights of Columbus have been trained to take out insurance policies for their children. What about insurance policies for the salvation of our children? What matter us if we give good monies to our children and leave their souls broken and ready to go into the face of God? To bring a story of not saying I did my best, but who are you? Brothers, Christ the King is calling us to a new and powerful battle. He's calling us now to the battlefield that has already been won. We see the truth that the world cannot see, that Jesus is risen, that evil is defeated, that the final victory has been won by our Christ. The evil one, we see him running away, but he's doing what armies often do. He's doing a scorched earth policy. That means he's burning everything he can behind, and he wants to leave behind nothing for the victory of the king. 
So we know our, his tactics. But we know more our way of victory in our Lord. All this stuff that I'm talking about is a call to me, a call to us Christians, to be people who are doers of the victory of Christ. What does that mean? Do you have a year or a week? We just have a few minutes tonight. And I look around and say, here am I, speech of fine, talking to people who are doing it. And anything I say as a priest after 34 years of preaching, I have learned from my brother knights and their wives, from the late people, from my parents. I see that the first thing that one does to defend the faith is to remember we're not defending. What did Jesus say? You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the armies of the evil one will never break through the castle. Nope. It's not what he said. He said the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. That means we're on the outside, attacking the evil one. We're not besieged by evil. He is crushed under the foot of the Blessed Mother, under the chorus of saints who are victorious. And we are part of that victory group. And that means we live as people of excellence, not as wimps, not as those who are around underfoot. And there's a word for a life of excellence, and that word is virtue. Virtus, to hell with language of values. I hold Catholic values I've turned all over the place. Big deal. Valuable means something in terms of money, and it's a new word. We have an old word, virtue, and it means strength. The first virtue that comes and is woven into what Brother Joe presented to us. The first virtue is a way of living unity and fraternity and charity. And it's the way of having a magnificent vision. Magnanimity. That's what we know is the first of the old virtues. To have a vision to see what is unseen and to live for that. It's unclear to other people, to our kids, who are down looking at their dang computers. But we see it. We look up and we say, there's where we're going. We come in here and we say, there's where we're going. Lord Jesus, there's where we're going. We see it. It's clear to us. That's how Michael McGivney lived. He had a vision. He lived in faith, that vision. And now, Michael McGivney sees clearly in the eternal day the reality of that vision. So no more accepting death and smallness. We're not a group of losers. We are not a small church willing to be small. We are a seed sown by the victor. And the victory is his. And the Knights of Columbus, two million strong, are a testimony to the world about that. And there's no more accepting the armor of the enemy. What army, armor do we put on? St. Paul tells us. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Therefore, stand and fasten the belt of truth around your waist. Okay? And put on the breastplate of righteousness. I wear, like, these are the prayers that the priest makes when he gets ready to go to the altar. We should be praying that every day. And for sure, 
boots on your feet, put on what will ever make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. And with all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. It was not those men who came from the Civil War, who out of some romantic fantasy wanted us to be called knights. It was St. Paul who asked us to be dressed. So here's the dressing I challenge you to. Be prudent. There's the virtue. Today we live in a world where fear is a virtue. The more fearful you are, the more virtuous. Right? Oh, you're not fearing the virus enough. On the other hand, then you got people like, I'm not afraid, but my parents have got one almost 90 year old who, the Lord wants me to know about it. Well, I'm not wearing a dead mask. And then another 97 year old who's like, well, I'm going to wear my mask because I love the people and I have to be careful. Right? It's a mess in all of that stuff. What's the response? Why are we having problems? Because no one was trained to be prudent. Right? Little kids were told, don't go. <coughs> get into people's faces and stuff. They weren't trained in that prudence. Knights, clothed in armor, know what they need. They know how to be dressed. Look to wisdom. Look to the word of the Lord. In the church, you have to study it and make it your own. Your children will not hear it through me. Your friends will not hear it through me. They will hear the word of victory through joyful people who are confident enough to, if they don't know something, say, you know what, that's a good question. Let's see if we can find an answer and study it together. Right? You don't have to win every argument. You don't have to win every battle. In fact, you don't even have to win the war Jesus has. You just have to surrender to his clothing. Study it. Make it your own. Father McGivney saw this. He saw a way in advance of his time. The time when the church was establishing strong priestly presence, Michael McGivney saw that the future of the church in this part of the world, indeed, throughout the world, rests in the laity. Knights of Columbus, ladies of the, of the knights, that's you. Be courageous. That's the third way of living charity, unity, and fraternity. Don't be crazy. You can't be courageous and crazy at the same time. You can only be crazy. Right? A courageous person is someone who knows that there's a real challenge. It might be that my daughter in law or my son-in-law will not allow me to see my grandchildren if I talk about Jesus. What do I do? They don't be crazy. They be smart. You carve Jesus. You, know, you make Jesus patterns in a pen set and in the, sun, in the way you arrange the pork on the plate. <laughs> so they put up, oh, look at Look at all of our spring rolls are shaped. Jesus? <laughs> you make sure you bless the food. If they don't allow you to bless the food, first of all, say, no blessing, no food for me. There's the door. You can eat my food. You can say my prayer. Be courageous. And just see how long the child is going, Mama, Dad, why are we going to grandma and grandma? Because they believe in Jesus and they pray and they're trying to force that down your throat. See how that's going to work. Be not afraid. Look at the reality and move forward. Do the faith. And where is the place that we find all of this? Right here. Where might we give me found it? At the altar that he served as a young boy, that he saw his mother come to. The days that she was carrying a stillborn child, or a child that was born only to die, because they lived in utter poverty. They came to the Eucharist, and they knew that that child
was caught in the victory of Christ, as is every single aborted child. They, they stand in Christ's presence, interceding for us. And they see with Michael Gifney's eyes the truth that we discover in this Eucharist, that at the heart of this mess of our life is Jesus, who brings us every Sunday back, speaks a word and cleans back our hair like a dad looks back our hair. <laughs> Dusts off the armor, straightens us up, puts himself into us, sends us out again. He's no general that sits up in the hotel sipping wine while his soldiers die. He's the one who has died first. So that wherever his soldiers might seem to die, he is victorious. And, and the gift of the rosary, which we knights are supposed to carry all the time. Here it is, the simple prayer that was Michael McGivney's strength, that he prayed with his mother when he was a little kid and didn't know why she was crying, when she played, prayed with his seminarians up in Canada, he studied in Canada. He prayed with the men in the basement of that church that just put God burned down where I love to worship. That he prays with us from the heavenly place every time we take this. The rosary of the Holy Spirit. These are weapons that the devil cannot, cannot withstand because they're not weapons of violence. When we're slapped, we say, I, you have to backhand me. And you cannot do that without me praying so that you know that I am the child of the Father. And I have a mother who sees and loves. This is a weapon. It's simple, really. Eucharist and weapon. And the word, basically. We think we need all this fancy technology. No. Kids can't eat video games. Video games and online chat won't help them when they face the great moments in which important decisions are made. Jesus is there. You knights love your priests. Even though you know our humanity, you love us. Why? Because of the extraordinary ordinariness of Father Michael McGivney, who by God's will, tomorrow, we will be able to call what our Savior has always called him. Blessed. Do you hear Father McGivney's voice among all the saints? He's reminding us, defenders of the faith, that we too, for Jesus, are always called.
Thank you, Jesus, for calling these nights in this place, in all the places that have been here today, to be those who respond to your call, to go into the battlefield of love, united, filled with charity, to win in the eyes of the world what we see, your victory. Jesus, we love you. Long live Jesus. Christus vincit. Christus regna. Christus imperat. Vivat Christus. Amen. Thank you, Father Pena, for the very enlightening, and uh, I'm sure everybody was of some kind of realization on the challenges that we face in this uh, in, uh, in this modern world. Especially, uh, we have kids, we have children that are obviously uh, been uh, doing or uh, using gadgets and those kind of stuff that are uh, becoming a challenge in our new society. Uh, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the presence also of uh, Father Paul Pam, uh, the Associate Pastor for the Holy Spirit Parish. Father.